Hello everybody, and today we're going to be reading part 2 of Diary of a Wimpy Kid Breaking Drummies, obviously based off of Breaking Bad. Thank you for all the support on the channel recently, even if I have not been uploading, but if you guys could hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it because I'll try to upload more. Um, if you guys get me to 1k before the end of the year, would really appreciate that. Uh, we only got like about a month and a half left till 2023, but I still think we can reach that goal. So yeah, anyway, part 2 of Baking Drummies. Last time, they found a lawyer, Gary Goodman, gotta call Gary, to cover up their shenanigans. But yeah, let's just, you guys could go watch part one, it's my previous video on the channel. But yeah, let's just get straight into it. Thursday, while Rowley was out last night on a drop, I did some research on Gary Goodman. Turns out he's got an uh, interesting past. He, he even did some time in jail for an incident a few years ago. Let's just say he's not allowed within 30 blocks of a middle school. I'm not going to comment on that, which is a problem since that's where Rally and I operate the most. Speaking of Rally, he came back from his run looking absolutely terrified. Rally explained that the drop was going well, and right as he was about to get the money, Lawrence Hink, the renowned hitman known as Uncle Larry, showed up. Guess who is here? Uncle Larry! Scream! The only reason Rally made it out was because Larry st struck the boiler which blew up and sent him flying. I told Rowley about Goodman, and that seemed to get him back on track. We set up an appointment with Goodman tomorrow, and we got to work figuring out how to get rid of Larry. We knew that as long as Larry was still out there, no drummy dealer was safe. And even though we were all technically rivals, the old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, comes to mind. If we can get someone to help take out Larry, then who's to say we can't take out two birds with one stone? Friday. After school, when Rally and I got back to the RV to make a huge batch of drummies for Bryce, we found a huge surprise waiting for us. Mum. This whole time, been so careful to keep Mum from finding out about our drummy operation, and here she was practically inviting herself in. Greg, you need to stay away from the trailer. There's a ton of illegal drummies in there. I'm trying to call your uncle to get him to confess to having them, and then I'm calling the cops. As easy as it would to be to pin the whole thing on Uncle Gary, I wasn't about to let Mom think he was running the operation. Mom, those drummies are mine. Rally and I have been in business all school year. No need for the cops. Well, that went as well as I thought it would. Let me get this straight. You and Rally are drummy dealers. Yes, and we've made over two two thousand five hundred dollars this week alone. Finally, I have my own income. Gregory Heffley, you know drummies are illegal. I need to go to the police with this. As mum dialed the police, my mum, my mind was racing. If I surrendered to mum, I'd be grounded for who knows how long. On the other hand, if I'd lose everything if the police got me. Of course, you don't become the top drummy dealer of plain view by being dumb. You have to think fast, and that's exactly what I did. Cook for me. I realized that my story wasn't the tightest, but if I got Larry locked up and it got us off a hook, then I deserved a Pulitzer. Believe it or not, that worked. Hello, police. Obviously, oh, the story here was that Larry just made Greg made it look like Larry is making him cook for them. So yeah, believe it or not, that worked. Hello, police. A man named Lawrence Hink who operates Uncle the, under the name Uncle Larry. Mom told Rowley and I to go home, but we had no intention of going home since our meeting with Goodman was in a few hours. In that time, we decided to see Albert because he was the only one who told us about drummies, but he didn't really seem to be in the mood to talk. Listen, Albert, too many people are on to it. Three, four, five, five, named Clyde. Get it, Clive? Uh, I'll come back later then. After I left Albert to whatever he was doing and headed downtown with Rowley to meet Goodman at the address he gave us. Cornies. Is this some kind of joke? After waiting for about 30, 20 minutes, Rowley started to worry if we had walked into another sting. Listen, Greg, I know you hired this guy, but I keep feeling like Baby Gibson is going to show up again. I'm scared, man. After another 30 minutes passed, Riley had convinced me that we were most likely in danger, and we were about to leave. Finally, Goodman showed up. Look, I'm a pretty desperate guy and all, but I think I made a bad choice here. Gentlemen, do you know that you have rights? The Declaration of Independence says you do. Still, I can't get too harsh. We explained our situation to Goodman, and this is how that went. And now my mom, Papa, Tony, and Uncle Larry are on my house. But I have bought some time, and they'll catch up to us eventually. What should we do? Come on, dude, I'm getting nervous over here. Alright, you definitely need to keep the Larry story with your mom. But what for the others, have you considered murder? After <laughs> he suggested this, Riley and I just left. We went, to, we, went, we went to him to stay out of trouble, not to get ourselves into more. I'll admit I'm scared if hearing things in class is any sign. Mr. Kathleen, did you finish your murder I assigned last night? 
Monday. Things for me have been, well, crap, since me since we met with Goodman the other day. Rowling was so upset that I hired someone who pushed murder that he actually left the business. No, absolutely not. When it was just us selling chicken wings, I was down. But now your so-called lawyer is telling us to go against Joshies. Look, good, look, Goodman was a mistake. I'll admit, we're not going to murder anyone, Rally. Honest. Get out, Greg. You're in danger, and I don't want to be in danger for stupid drummies. Now, Rowley and I have our share of fights, drummies or no drummies, but we went too far this time, so I gave him a piece of my mind. Rowley, who do you think you're talking to? Let me tell you, friend. I am not in danger, no. I am the danger. I am not the nerd who answers a knock at the classroom door and gets pantsed. No, I am the one who knocks. Even though that speech was awesome, I decided to leave Rowley's house. So now I'm on my own. I have a ton of things to do while keeping up the drummy business. I've got to find a way to take out not only Uncle Larry, but Papa Tony and the Mingos. On a positive note, I decide on the alias name, Heffenberg. At this point, who needs Rowley? Business is booming, and there's nobody to share the spotlight with. I must admit, I, I, I gave some extra thought to what Goodman said. If I took out Larry, Tony, or whoever else, I could take the top spot in all of Plainview. I decided to take out Larry first, as far as... Since, as far as I know, he's a, a nobody's assassin. Like Tony, who I'm fairly certain has goons. So what do you got there, little fella? I gotta say, I'm impressed. How by how stupid Larry was to stick his face but that close to a TNT lace tattle turtle. Tuesday. Today at school, I was shocked to hear my name over the PA speakers. Heffenberg, report to Principal Roy's office immediately. First off, I don't know how anyone got my name. How they were stupid enough to think I'd just stand up and admit it was me. Remember, rule one of selling drummies is, always be one step ahead. I wanted to investigate this, but like I said, standing up when I heard the name would be stupid. During the class change, when the hall was packed with students, I slipped into Roy's office, and let's just say I was not expecting who I found. Well, hello there, Heffenberg. It took a while to get here. Rowley? What on earth was he doing with Ward, who was one of the who was one of Leland's goons? My first thought was that R Ward was holding Rowley hostage, but then I saw a new tattoo on Rowley's arm, meaning honor and chicken. This could only mean one thing. After a big fight, Rowley betrayed me. I can't believe he did this. Rowley started to launch into this entire spiel about how in Leland's circle he was actually treated as a member of the team, not just a punching bag. Right then, right then is when everything went black. I woke up a few hours later in Leland's hideout. He told me that Rowley joined him. They were able to f in get info from him and bring down my entire operation. That's it. Everything Rowley and I had worked on for the last four months. Gone. Then Leland said something that chilled me to my core. After taking out the all the others, I now get to take my revenge, Heffenberg. Well, shit. Tuesday. You probably thought I had died at Leland's, didn't you? Well, I'm still here. How did I get out? Well, it's kind of funny. Literally the mo moment Lelands opened the door to kill me, I spot a little baggie on the floor. Lelands went off on this long speech that I didn't really listen to. This gave me time to grab the baggie. Chopped nuts. He boy with Leland, violently allergic. I totally forgot Leland was allergic to peanuts. I figured one of my his goons had left it around by accident. Leland was still rambling about what he'd do when I was dead, so I made my move. Let's just say that bag was accurate. Leland puffed up like a balloon, and that was my cue to run. While fle fleeing, I was afraid I was going to run into Lelland's goons or rally, but I guess they all took the night off or something because there was nobody around to stop me. I th that was the night I boarded for a plane for Isla de Corrales, gave Plainview a big old middle finger and never looked back. I've got to say, this place is a lot nicer than the island, the, the island feds aren't, but the island feds, now that the island feds aren't after me, since I'm technically now Heffenberg, not Greg Heffley. I've even got my own sand on the beach. Let me tell you, these people eat up drummies like their lives depend on it. Now, well, now I'm rich, and I can happily thank the day I started making drummies. So moral of the story here, I don't know what the moral of the story here is, but very solid. Guys, if you haven't watched Breaking Bad already, or Better Call Saul, watch both of them. They're so good. They're, they're just so good. Just watch them, please. Please. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know what I should read next. I'm out of here. Bye.